Hello friends, so let's get to work on your module 5 draft. So the one thing I want to first start off with is a reminder that this is a proposal for a creator's residency. So when you're writing a proposal, remember that you're trying to convince an audience. You have something that you're trying to do. Think of it as the people with the money need to figure out whether or not to accept this artist. So think about that as you're doing that. That's actually a really good work skill to be thinking about and playing with in this assignment. So think about that. Keep that in your mind as you're working. So let's take a look at what we're doing this week. So this is part three of your final project. And in this, you're switching your attention from the artist and the work into how it has affected culture, how culture has affected it. So it goes both ways. Culture is one thing, right? How we affect culture, it changed the way that we see this, for example, or the culture is the one that pushed them towards thinking about it. So I wanna take you through this really quickly and think about a couple, uh, a, a one particular art movement and how that movement um, changed culture and the power and bias and things like that. Okay, describe the cultural significance of the selected work. Okay, so I want to think about the move from realism, which is this sort of still life painted in 1700s by Rachel Reich, to this, Impressionism, The Water Lilies by Claude Monet. Okay, this is a very different kind of art. Both of these are culturally significant. So when this, okay, so this right here, this is the still life. This was for very rich people. They would place some flowers in a studio, the artist, they would pay an artist, the artist would come in, paint the flowers over several days, and then they would have this painting at the end of it. And it was a symbol of being rich, it was a symbol of being cultured, and it was only for the wealthy. That's a pretty good cultural significance. And when it comes to Impressionism, paintings are still being bought by the rich. But, especially with Impressionism, these were being shown in galleries for the wide masses to see. Not just the rich, but everyone of every class could come and see them. So there's a shift in the cultural significance. Now, obviously this isn't like sitting in a studio because this is a pond with water lilies in it. And that was another thing that they wanted to do. They wanted to go out into the world and paint what was there, not go into a studio and be stifled inside. So there are some pretty big shifts that indicate some cultural significance, right? All right, now I've already hinted at a power structure. If you think about what I just said, think about it. This particular painting, just for the rich, for the rich, inside their houses, nobody gets to see it. But the water lilies, are in a gallery for people to see and it was a major cultural thing to take your family even if you weren't rich to see these paintings that's pretty great and it is a major power structure that was shifting so remember we had the french revolution well this is post french revolution so rather than having just the aristocracy come out or the very rich now it was more egalitarian right so that's where it, that goes. That's a pretty big power structure that had gone away. That sense of only the rich or only the aristocracy can have art. That's a great power structure, right? Uh, and how that power structure had shifted is important. Okay, impact of bias. So one of the things that when you think about bias, remember bias is, is, tends to be more positive. I am biased towards something and I'm prejudiced against. That's something that we learned about in this module, right? So if we're biased towards something, what is the bias that impacted these? And not only that, but how does it affect how we see other, other parts of the culture? So with the water lilies, there is a bias towards fresh air, painting outside, getting away from the stifled nature of the still life. So with this then, the bias is towards nature. It is towards fresh air, sunshine, the light of, the, of Monet's paintings 
come from his garden and from his place in France. So the bias is then towards nature. Now, your bias, think about your particular uh, in, uh, creator and think about what it is they wanted to do. Generally, bias tends to be in what we want to do, how we want to push forward. It often, bias often is about how I want to change the culture. So for the second part, think about that. What does that bias do towards changing things? All right, describe the characteristics of the culture. So <clears throat> that's really a great one, right? So you have to think about who the people were who were actually watching or looking at your creator, creator's works at the time they were produced. Now, obviously, this is a place where you might need to dig into a little bit of history. You might need to do a little bit of research, go and find some sources that are going to help you understand what it was like at the time that your creator existed. Now, I'm going to caution you too. Don't rely on your own understanding, right? Go and check yourself, especially if it's a creator that lived during your lifetime and you're like, I'm a huge fan of this creator. That's great, but I want you to be sure that you understand and think about what was this creator? What are some of the beliefs? Really challenge yourself to look at the whole picture and not just what you what you know. Okay. What are some of the elements of culture? What are some symbols, language, custom? Okay. Let's go back to these two paintings. So there is a sense of everything being very ordered here. Yes, there's lots of flowers going everywhere, but it is arranged. There's a reason they call it still life. It is still controlled. And if you think about the culture that I was talking about, right? Only the rich had these. That's a pretty big thing that they're going to be wanting to do. Control, keep everything the same. And that's what you see in still life. So when you see the water lilies, the symbol is about the world around you. Not just what's in your room, but there's never control to nature. As you very well know, nature will rain on you. Nature will, it will be cloudy. It will be foggy. You can't control nature. So this, there's a difference then between culturally a shift from the early 1800s to the late 1800s. There's a shift in this understanding of, of can we control nature? No. So let's celebrate it where it is. So that's what you're kind of getting to in this idea of symbols, right? Because this is controlled, you, this is arranged. So when I, I would describe this painting as being arranged, this painting is not arranged. That's the difference. So that's what you're talking about. Uh, so when we're thinking about the creator's culture, it will help us understand more of the of why the creator got to where they did with a creative work. And that's really what this question is about. Why this work for this creator? What contributed to that from his, her, or their culture? So if you think about this then, right, this particular artist uh, was one of the still life painters who would go around and paint for the rich and this painter was not claude monet didn't go around painting for rich people at all he painted for galleries and then his works were purchased and that's how he did his art it's a it's a little different power structure inside of that but also let's remember something about claude monet for rachel reich she was under the aristocracy when she painted her works. So there were kings and nobles, and it was still in that era. After the revolution, the French Revolution, there is no aristocracy in France. It's egalitarianism. It completely rules. They're, they model themselves over the American Revolution. If you've listened to Hamilton, you know that we, the influence of Lafayette also transferred over to France. So Claude Monet lived through that time, that shift from the aristocracy into that egalitarian era. And so for that reason, this idea of 
I'm going to go out into the world is actually a demonstration against what we had seen before. Okay, I hope that's helpful. As always, if you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them, and I will see you next week.